You're addicted. I'm addicted. We're all addicted to a daily ritual which prior to the coronavirus pandemic, none of us paid any attention to it. But now this daily ritual can be harmful. Now we're told to wash our hands. Now we're told to suddenly stop doing this human behavior that we do all the time. Don't touch your face, right? Touching your face in these times can touch off a firestorm in your life that nobody wants. So to give you some valuable insights, we reached out to a human behavior and relationship expert who does national media spots all the time. It just so happens she's a resident of Gilbert, Arizona. Dr. Karen Ruskin is a therapist, educator, author, speaker, and frequent media contributor. Thank you, Dr. Karen, for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm so glad you're having me here today because everybody is struggling, and I am definitely here to help and to talk about the topics people are struggling with. Why do we touch our faces? How common is it? But why? Why do we do this? If you research it, there's a varying degree as far as how often we actually touch our face. And the fact is it's really often. Scientists report anywhere from 23 times per hour to 16 times per hour, depending on what research study you're looking at. The bottom line is we touch our face a lot. So why? There's a few reasons. First off, from my perspective, let's think about the five senses. What are our senses? Sight, smell, taste, sound, touch. So. All of that happens with regards to our face, all the data, everything that comes into us comes in through this part of our body. So it makes sense that we actually touch this part of our body. Also, anytime we're thinking, our, he our hand goes to our face, if we're expressing, or if we're feeling bored, or if we're, you know, maybe this little twirl, if we're finding ourselves, um, head scratcher, you know, there's all moving of our glasses. If there's any kind of physical discomfort, itch, or thought, we always go to our face. So it makes sense that we are. It's not an odd phenomenon. Do you think face touching actions work with, say, other addictions like alcohol or substance abuse where the brain works on a faulty reward system and says, give me more and more of this? So I believe when it comes to touching our face, it's either an accurate or inaccurate depiction of what it is that we're really feeling, meaning it could be both and, not an either or debate. So we touch because something is itchy or because we're thinking something or we're uncomfortable. Whatever it is, it makes sense that we're touching and our body says, ooh, that feels good. I now feel reassured. So of course we're going to do it again. On the flip side, no matter how often we touch our face, we always seem to need to touch it more, which is why it's so important right now from everything that we're hearing, our hands must remain clean and we try and decrease the quantity of the touching. So look, like anything we're trying to stop or decrease or improve upon, the solution is about mindful awareness. Live consciously. For an example, I feel an itch right here, so should I take my hand and scratch it, or should I just take a tissue and go like this? Just have a tissue on hand instead of it being with your hands. I know, I know, people are talking about using their gloves and walking around the house with gloves, but there's a fine line between striking a balance between smart vigilance and panicky neuroses. So Dr. Karen, do you think with everything going on in people's lives right now, it's best not to focus on climbing this mountain of stopping immediately to touch your face? Or is it better to not obsess over that and instead focus on what you can do, which is wash your hands well and wash them often? Yeah, overall, it's best if we just keep our hands and our fingers clean and try not to get neurotic about not touching your face. Because if we pick on any one thing that we're going to become neurotic about, neuroses brings on more neuroses. So uh, look at it like this. We're all noticing if somebody, let's say you're at the supermarket and someone bumps into you and you have this overreaction. Normally we don't overreact. Everything is becoming an overreaction. So if you are so fearful of touching your face to the point where you're over obsessing about it, you really can make yourself sick because stress 
hormones are a real thing. And right now people are under a great deal of stress. So just keep your hands clean, live consciously, you don't have to overdo it, have a tissue on hand if you need to rub, but not with an over abundance of, oh my gosh, I can't touch myself at all, because then you're really going to make yourself unwell. It's such a challenging time for people. You know, anxiety is already the number one mental health disorder in America. And this is creating anxiety even in people who don't normally have anxiety. So if you add on top of it, anxiety about touching your face, anxiety on top of anxiety on top of anxiety, make smart choices, the balance, it's the balance. I keep going back to the balance. That's what I try and help people with. It's how do you balance between smart vigilance and panicky neuroses. And that's up to each one person to decide for themselves. That's really what it comes down to. What's good for you? I know touching faces is not your specialty. It's not what you do day in and day out. But if people like your style from what they've seen and heard, why don't you quickly tell them about how you could help them, how you could help their marriage or their family situations? <laughs> yeah, you know, typically people don't come to a therapist's office saying, I have a problem touching my face. Can you help me with that? <laughs> but with that said, people do come for any kind of problem. And so my specialization is in relationship dynamics, whether it's the relationship we have with our own health and wellness, emotionally, physically, professionally, the relationship we have with our family, our children, our spouse, relationship dynamics, and human behavior. Why we do the things we do, solution-focused treatment to help ourselves get to a better place. That's what I live and breathe, and whether I'm providing remote counseling or in-office counseling. Thank you so much, Dr. Karen Ruskin, for touching on this subject. If you would like more information from Dr. Karen Ruskin, here is how you can get in touch with her. Please be good to yourselves. Be safe. Be smart. Keep social distance. Wash your hands often, and enjoy your days as best you can. Thanks for tuning in to this video on Arizona Live.